Number 66. Using the bond energies in table 7.2, determine the approximate enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have this reaction right here. So we have ethene, which is H2C with a double bond with a CH2, plus hydrogen gas, H2 gas, and we will yield ethane, which is two carbons and six hydrogens, H3C, CH3. Okay, so we want to find the approximate, so not exact, enthalpy change. Well, what is the enthalpy change? Well, anything that's in chemistry, physics, um, calculus, right? A change is always represented by this triangle. That's the delta sign. Change in enthalpy. Enthalpy, there's an H in enthalpy, so this is delta H. Now, just know that the enthalpy, delta H, is the amount of heat energy. So, uh, H is all around. Heat energy, enthalpy, delta H, this is just going to tell us approximately how much heat is either released or absorbed when this reaction occurs. Now, we can't go to the back of the textbook to get your delta H state values, those values that are with those little notches up top. We have to use the bond energies. Now, the bond energies are the energies in the specific bonds of the Lewis structure. Now, the only thing that I see here is I see a double bond. That's what these two lines represent. But do I see any other bonds here? No. So the first thing that I would do is just know that when they're asking for bond energies, just take a second and draw out the Lewis structures. So try to draw them out as much as you can because then you'll be able to see who has a single bond, who has a double bond, and who has a triple bond. So uh, we have tons of videos on this channel just designated to finding Lewis structures. So if you do need more guidance, you could always check the channel out. We got tons of videos for you there. This one will kind of be like a quick conversion. So you could pause the video and see if your uh, answer matches mine. Now let's go. So I will start off with this uh, H2C double bond CH2. I see that I have the double bond already, so I'll just draw that. C double bonded to C. I got two H's on the left, two H's on the right. It does not matter how you draw your H's. You could draw them one on top, one on bottom, one on top on the side. You could maybe make them as symmetrical as possible. I'll try it. I'll try that one. So we'll have H and H and eh. Maybe I'll do one on top and one on the side. It doesn't really matter. But just know that hydrogens, remember, hydrogen can, can only have single bonds. So single it up, single it up. Same thing here. We'll have one hydrogen on the top and one hydrogen on the right of the carbon. They're both bound singly. And this compound is done. Now it's this plus H2. So I have another hydrogen bound to a hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have single bonds, so how beautiful is that? And maybe, uh, I guess, I guess that's good, right? And then this will yield our ethane, and now we just have to see, well, what's going on here? Well, instead, these carbons are still bound to each other, and now it seems like I added one more hydrogen. I had two but now I have three. Let me write this in blue to show that this is the product side. So now I'll have one, ooh, one, two, three hydrogens surrounding the one carbon. That's this H3 bound to the C. And then you have the three hydrogens bound to the other carbon. So H, H, and H. Okay, single bond all the H's up because they're only allowed to have one one single bond. And then because of that, each carbon has already three bonds, six electrons, so you could only have the one single bond now. And now we have our, whoop, we have our balanced Lewis structure. So now we can see specifically what bonds we're dealing with. And the thing here is to know that when you're dealing with your bond energies, the only thing that matters across the board is all the bonds that changed between the two sides. You wanna find bonds that have broken and you wanna find bonds that have formed, meaning that you wanna see the differences between the both sides. 
So, for example, um, <clears throat> we look um, back to the, um, you know, where the, the bond energies are, maybe in a textbook or something, but I pulled up the bond energies for you just so that, you know, we could work them through this question. BE stands for bond energy. And now we just go one by one where we say, okay, was this CH bond on the right side? Yes, it was. So this bond was not broken nor formed. We don't care about it. Same thing with this one. This one is right here. So don't care, right? But when we come down to the double bond, right? I say, oh, that's not a double bond anymore. That's a single bond. That's something that changed. So this has definitely broken. So I'm going to put the 611 kilojoules per mole. That's something that is different. So I'm going to say, okay, we got 611 kilojoules for that double bond. And let's just see if anything else didn't change. CH, 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 everything good. And then when I come over here, I say, okay, I have an HH bond, but do I have that HH bond on the right side? No way. It broke. So I just have to grab that number, 436. And then we keep going. So now on this side, we look at the different bonds that have formed. Now we already kind of talked about the one bond, right? It turned from a double to a single. Any change, you have to write it down. So now, since I have a single bond in this molecule, I'm going to write that down. That's a 345 kilojoules per mole. But now, is there anything else that is not the same between these two compounds? We already discussed that all four of these hydrogens are all four of these hydrogens, but there's two additional CH bonds. I have to add those. So a CH bond is 415, uh, right? So 415. Whoop. But now, how many do I have in this molecule? Well, I have one CH, and I have another CH that was formed. So I technically have to take this 415 and times it by, you got it, 2. So 415 times 2. I get 830 for the total of those bonds. But now I just want to find out, you know, the total energy for this one compound. I have 345 coming from CC and I got 830 coming from the CH. So we're going to add them up. 345 plus 830 is this plus 345. I get 1,000. 175 kilojoules per mole. But the thing here now is, well, what are we going to do with these numbers, right? There's got to be some formula, and you're exactly correct. The formula is this. So maybe in this case, I'll just throw it all the way down here, right? If I want to find that approximate delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction. Remember that there's no state function here, so it's approximate. We're just doing the sum, which is this funky little symbol, this is the sum, aka we just, you know, add all of the bond energies of the bonds that have been broken. And your reactants are the bonds that have broke minus the sum of all of the bond energies in which the bonds have formed. Bonds have formed is always the product side. So, in this case, we just have to sum up the total of the reactants and sum up the total of the products. It's literally this compound plus this. So 611 plus 436. So let's do this math. We got this, guys, right? 611 plus 436. And I get a total of 1,047 kilojoules per mole. And we already kind of tallied up the total for the bonds formed. There's only one of these, so we don't have to add anything. And now we're just ready to go. So delta H for the whole entire reaction is that sum of the reactants, 1047 minus 
the product side, the bonds formed, which is 1,175. And now all we got to do is just do the math. So a delta H approximately is, drum roll please, this minus this. And turns out that this reaction is exothermic because it is a negative. So 128 kilojoules per mole uh, is the heat amount of energy that is lost into the uh, surroundings because it's exothermic. So you're releasing the 128 kilojoules. And that's the answer. Okay, what do you think? Thank you for viewing the video. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard. I believe in you, okay? Don't give up. Chem could be hard, but just stick with the videos. You guys got this. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.